every morning I would just cry and I would look in the mirror and I would say like you're stronger than that and I would wipe off all my tears and smile as big as I could to like make myself think that I was okay. When I was driving I would go you know, I was driving myself, I would go like a couple hours late because I didn't want to go to this class because I'd get made fun of in this class. And when I would go, I would go to the bathroom and sit in the bathroom for an hour. I would leave and sit in my car and cry for, you know, a period or two. So I was not handling it very well. I'm from Parkersburg, West Virginia. I didn't really ever feel like that was home for me. When I was little, I didn't really feel like I fit in, and, and that, was, that was pretty consistent up until high school. In small towns, you grow up there, marry there, stay there, and start to cycle over again, and I, I didn't feel like I was ever going to get out of that. In high school, it got really hard because I just didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. High school, I think, is hard. You know, for everybody, I think it's a time where uh, you kind of feel like you have to define a little bit who you are. In West Virginia, I just, I went to a big school. It was, my class was like 450 or 500 kids, I believe. There was a core group of people that if you didn't fit into their group, then you just, you, nobody really associated with you. When I got some awards for basketball, um, my first, accolades, I guess, in high school. Um, I was in the running for player of the year after my freshman year, and I was all state team. And so nobody really makes it out of Parkersburg. So I think that a lot of people, you know, when I committed to Michigan State, they kind of, I don't know if they, you know, took that wrong or like maybe got defensive about the fact that I was leaving or um, made them think that I thought I was better than everybody else or something but they started just treating me different. In my sophomore year, they started starting rumors all over the state, like just crazy stuff, making stuff up about me, telling people don't talk to her. I was like on edge and, you know, I didn't know what was coming next and then somebody would say something small or make up another rumor and it could just, you know, it destroyed me. It was really hard. Probably one of the hardest things I've ever been through in my life, to watch your kids struggle and not be able to help them, really. It's a struggle between should we say something, should we remain quiet? They really had no idea what was going on, none, because Taryn never told anyone, ever. She never said a word. You know, she'd come home, it was always a struggle at home, and she never let anybody know outside. My basketball team was the core group of girls that were um, just not treating me right. And there was one practice in specific I remember. I was shooting at a bucket by myself and one of my teammates came over and started talking to me. And from across the gyms, the other girls yelled, oh, okay, you're not in our group anymore then. Because some girl wanted to say something to me like it was like nobody was allowed to talk to me. And, and like they started not passing me the ball and they started, you know, and, and then they would laugh to each other because they thought it was funny. That was really hard, you know, that was, that was a hard thing to get through and I think that a lot of girls go through that that people don't even know about. I know how that feels to not be good enough. And I, I heard the, the rumors for so long, it, I started to believe them. It's one of those things that you don't know, do I keep my mouth quiet? Do I stand up for her? Do I blow this out of proportion? What, what do I do to, to help her? Because you could see the struggle that she had and she didn't allow anybody else to see it, but we saw it. You don't know what you can do to help. There were some things that went on and some things put out on social media about Taryn. She was at a mall with uh, two friends and it was 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, some, something like that. And um, she had either texted me or called me and said, hey, here's what happened. And she was coming home and she came home. And by the time she got home, which could have been maybe 15 minutes, I'd already discussed it with Dina and said, 
here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give her the option. If she wants to leave, we're leaving right now. I told my dad, I'm like, I feel like God's telling me I can go now. And it was halfway through my senior year and I was like, I don't know why, but like, I feel light. I feel like I'm done. My work here is done. I called one friend in specific and he helped me pack my clothes in trash bags and we threw them in the back of the truck and we were here the same night and we never went back. <laughs> so that was like the moment where I knew that I, I was there for a reason. I texted the coach uh, this long message, but at this point it was affecting my health and I explained that to him. I was, you know, I was on anxiety medication and I was trying to fight it every day and I told him, you know, it's exhausting me. When she came here, she didn't know whether she could play basketball or not at East Lansing. And it was so bad that she didn't care. She said, I don't care. I have to get out of there. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I left on a Saturday and they played Monday. They beat the first team that they played. In the newspaper article the next day, the title was Taryn Who in all big, bold caps. I want to use this, you know, to tell other people if it's you that's going through it, get through it, because you can. I know it sounds impossible, but I, th I thought it was impossible for me, but I did it. It's okay to be different, you know. It's actually better to be that way. Uh, you don't want to conform to the world. It's boring. Just be different. She always said that this was her platform and she knew that this was what she was, what she was meant to do. And she knew basketball was that platform. It gave her the opportunity to reach kids like that. And for her to be able to be as strong as she was and deliver a powerful message like she can, I think it makes a big difference and it's, it's something that I'm really proud of her doing. Coming here to East Lansing, they were the most accepting fun, nice group of people. This community is seriously unbelievable. I don't think I ever would have felt like I fit in. And then I came here and it was like home, like instantly. She had an energy and an excitement that we hadn't seen in a long time out of her. And I saw her dancing before games and wanting to go places with people. And it just, I mean, it was a complete different kid. So. I can't say that, yes, it was herself because I hadn't seen that in so long. It was just, it was really nice. Whatever it was, the transformation was, was great. She was really happy for the first time in a long time. It's changed all of our lives in, in many ways. First of all, with, with Taryn getting to where she has just personally, um, it's made a big difference, but it changed all of our lives with us all moving here and being a part of it and the entire community has, has taken us in and um, not just here at Michigan State but the entire community. For my parents to be here that it just it just adds to everything it just shows me that this is home and you know my parents have they have just sacrificed so much for me and f I, I hope that this has been like a little bit of giving back to them. I want them to be everywhere because I want to at least a little bit be able to say thank you for getting me through everything. It's home to me and you know, I'm proud of it. East Lansing, that's why I'm introduced like that. If anybody was ever wondering, that's why my parents are here because they know it's home for me and now it's home for them.